Okay. This is I'm Glory Bound. <coughs> we did not bring the pitch pipe, so she's relying on me. Could be shaky. <laughs> I'm glory bound, I'm on my way to my eternal home. I'm going there with Christ to stay around the shining throne. The Lord has healed my sin-sick soul and set my spirit free. I'm glory bound, won't you come and go along with me? I'm glory bound, and I'm singing on my way. I'm going home, home, for my soul has been set free. I'm climbing up, being up, up going, going higher every day. I'm glory bound, won't you come and go along with me? I'll hear the angels singing there, I'll hear those harps of gold. Will all be glory everywhere, and none will e'er grow old. But best of all, I know someday his blessed face I'll see. I'm glory the rebound. Won't you come and go along with me? I'm glory the rebound, and I'm singing on my way. I'm going home, home, for my soul has been set free. I'm climbing up, going higher every day. I'm glory the rebound, won't you come and go along with me? I'm glory the rebound, and I'm singing on my way. I'm going home, home, for my soul has been set free. I'm climbing up, going higher every day. I'm glory bound, won't you come and go along with me? I'm glory bound, won't you come and go along with me? Amen. Supper there yet? A little bit of supper. <laughs> okay. Right. Some of these are songs that we sang years ago with uh, with Reverend Harvey. Most of you folks remember Bus Harvey, and we had a great time singing with him. It was just uh, very special to us with him and Mary Jean. And uh, but this one we've sung. We sung with them and, and by ourselves as well. This world is not my home. <clears throat> this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just over in glory land, they'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen.
If you, yeah, you guys, yeah. If you know it, just sing right along. It's no problem. We're, we're okay. We're fine with that. Um, this is a song that uh, I know we used to sing this with a guitar, but uh, it sounds it sounds fine no matter how you sing it, and it's a great song. Uh, I guess probably goes along with with the theme, with the idea, you know, that uh, where could we go? Where could I go? But to the Lord. Where could I go? Mm. Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? You have one more? Yeah, it's a solo. Oh. And maybe it'll be so low you can't hear it. I tried to get her to sing this with me, but very much like our schedule of life, and I was telling Buddy earlier, we're, we're too busy, and but we, we enjoy everything that we're doing and, and everything that we're involved in, and but so... How do you weigh it all out? You just got to keep trying to do everything. Uh, and so uh, I said at the last minute, I want you to sing this with me, and she refused. <laughs> <laughs> but but this, is, this is one of those songs, and I know I've shared this story probably, probably a bunch of times, but this is one of those old Charlie Pride songs, and off the Charlie Pride gospel, uh, and... and uh, this tells you how compatible my wife and I are. You know, I had, I, I still had the old eight track that my dad and I listened to when I was a kid, uh, and I'll explain that in a little bit. And she had the same, uh, she had the same album, so you know we listened to the same kind of kind of music. And and Charlie Pride, there, as far as gospel is <clears throat> concerned, there's there's uh, hardly anybody better. I just think he's terrific. Some of his songs are great, but. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, 13, 12, 13 years old, uh, my dad worked, uh, he had his own office uh, in, in a place up in Pennsylvania, and uh, I'd go out with him on Saturdays, I'd ride with him. And he had an old 65 Nova, that was the first car I got to drive. And well actually, I was the third person to drive, my sister got it before me. 
but it was, it was Dad's car, and it didn't have a radio in it. It had an old eight-track tape player, and everybody remembers those, except for maybe the little ones. <laughs> you know, what's that? <laughs> you know, and and, uh, uh, and if, if I had my T-shirt on tonight, I've got a T-shirt that says "Old School." That's me. I'm old school. I might not be old, but but I'm old school. And uh, we would we would uh, put that Charlie Pride eight-track in. And uh, we had the old uh, 260 air conditioning going on. You know what that is. <laughs> Everybody knows what that is. I don't have to say it. Does anybody not know what that is? Heather. T two windows down at 60 mile an hour. <laughs> 260 air conditioning. Yep. And, and my dad, my dad never, my dad never uh, sang in public, other, other than congregational numbers. But... He, we always said he was our manager because when we were, all of us kids, mom, she made us sing. We, yeah, we, had, we sang. We got to sing. But uh, dad never sang in public. But when we were going down the road listening to Charlie, we had both windows down, and both of us were just singing right with Charlie about the top of our lungs. And people probably drove past us, probably thought, what in the world is that? You know? But it didn't matter. It was Charlie Pride. You know? That was great. Uh, so this is, this is one of those songs. And I've been singing this song in my head. For, for all these years, and uh, it's, I wish I had, a, I, I probably should have a little more backup with it because it gets fast in the chorus, but I'm going to try and sing it for you. I'm going to try and sing it for you. It's Let Me Live. <clears throat> I got to get it right because it goes real high. I got to get it at the right spot. And this boy's a tenor, but I'm not that, I'm not a soprano. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let him always walk beside me. May he take my hand and guide me. Let me live in the light of his love. In that land of great tomorrow, where there'll be no pain or sorrow. Let me live in the light of his love. Let me live, let me live in the light his love can give. Let it shine like the sun up above. Let me feel every ray, every night and every day. Let me live in the light of his love. When this world is heavy laden, seems like all my dreams are fading. Let me live in the light of his love. To a heart that's filled with sadness, he can touch and fill with gladness. Let me live in the light of his love. Let me live, let me live in the light his love can give. Let it shine like the sun up above. Let me feel every ray, every night and every day. Let me live in the light of his love. Let me live in the else tonight. Thank you for coming out. Uh, <laughs>
Go on up here, Randy. <laughs> Might be a ball game coming on, I guess, tonight. <laughs> Won't have to record it. Uh, well, yeah, that's a good point. Pirates play tonight? I don't know. Not till later. Not until later. Yeah, because they're out cold, right? That's right. What well, time's the start? See how much time I got. Later. <laughs> you later. just go ahead. The, um, there's, a, there's a contemporary song out. And it, it's, I mean, it's been out for several years. And maybe... The song is something like, Let My Words Be Few. What's that song? You know the song I'm talking about? Has anyone ever heard the song? Evidently not. <laughs> there is this contemporary song out, but it's probably five years old. It still makes it contemporary. You know, when we go to the Imperials, and in the 70s, the Imperials were contemporary, but now they're Southern Gospel. Right. So, anyway, there's a, there's a contemporary song out that says, Let My Words Be Few, and it's a prayer. Randy's never prayed it. Okay. Happy. <laughs> Twins. <laughs> they call me Arnold. Schwarzenegger in the veto. Oh, my God. Right. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Okay. I'll be back. Glad to I look up to this man. <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> Not everyone. You know, people always tell me that. You know, how, how much. But size is relative, isn't it, to the people you associate with and the people you're around? Because a lot of the people I used to hang out with were 6'8, six, 6'10, six, seven footers. So I was the short guy in the mix. You know? So it's all kind of relative to where you're at and who you're with. Yeah, uh, on November the 1st, we have a guy coming to the church to speak on a Sunday night, and he's 6'11". Okay? So, uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of how it is. You may not want to come. You really <laughs> 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 uh, Let us <laughs> I, I, did, I did bring him up here. Not, not, to, not to have, but, well, maybe a little bit. Maybe, why don't you take another drink? Okay. <laughs> I've, I've been with Randy in revivals where he said, when the water is gone, he is done. Yeah. And uh, let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Our holy God, we do come before you tonight. Yes, we, we lift you up, Lord God. And Father, Randy has laid messages, given us messages that have been given to him to bring to this church, to bring to the people that are gathered here. No one, Lord, we know that no one in this church tonight is here by accident. Every single person was appointed by you to be here tonight to hear the message you want us to hear. Lord God, we look in the Old Testament scriptures and we see these people called prophets. And they were simply men and women who delivered your message to the people. And and that is what we have tonight, Lord God. We may not call ourselves prophets, but we serve that role, Lord. Randy serves this role tonight, and he has a message for our church. We pray and ask, Lord God, that you bless him, bless the words that he speaks, because he'll be speaking the words that you want him to speak from his heart. Open us, Lord, to your word. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Yeah, because I just might run into it. Huh? Yeah. I like to move around a little bit. Well, praise God. Are you glad that you came tonight? Amen. 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 I'm glad I've been able to come each and every night. And, and before I get too far, I really want to stress tomorrow night again. Uh, I just believe, you know, God's building up to something. And, and, and like I said, I've got the oil with me. Anybody needs prayer, anointed for anything, that's what I brought that for. And again, you know, James 1 and 20, 1 22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. And a lot of times we like to stop there, but the next line says, Deceiving your own self. We like to hear the word, and we think that's all there is. And it says, God says, You're deceiving yourself if you think you just hear it, and that's all there is to it. We have to be doers of the word. So tomorrow night, I'm going to ask you to come prepared to pray.
to pray, to be prayed for. Uh, I had mentioned earlier in the week about making lists of things in your life that needs prayer, people that might need prayer for. To pray for this church, for your pastor, for this community, for our nation. And I'm asking you tomorrow night to come prepared to do that. Come prepared to come forward. And, and I really feel that God's telling me to pray for you all. And not just in a, a general sense that, well, I'm going to pray for Ash or Glade. I want it to get personal tomorrow night. Amen? Amen. God wants to get personal with you. So I ask you, if you know anybody that needs prayer, and I'm not standing here, I'm not going to be claiming to be a faith healer or anything like that, but if God wants to heal somebody, if they're not here, they can't be healed. If you know somebody that needs to be healed and you don't bring them, they, can't, they don't have a chance of being healed. My wife bought a little plaque to put in our grandson's room when he comes to stay with us. It says 100% of every shot not taken is missed. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm asking you tomorrow night. Come expecting. I've told you each night, come expecting. So I'm asking you if you have younger children, teenagers, get them here tomorrow night. We need to be praying for our youth. Amen? Amen. We need to be praying for them. And we, if you know somebody, the teenagers, get them here so we can pray for them. Not that I'm anything special, but I know when we put God in the mix, He is somebody special and something special can happen. Amen? Amen. So I'm asking you, come expecting tomorrow night. I've been praying about it and, and, and it's just I'm, I'm just really excited to see what God's going to do. You know, and I look here and I see, I see even more people tonight than there has been. You know, if none of you, my prayers are being answered, because that's what I'm praying for, for people to come in Amen. to be a part of what God is doing. Well, tonight, each night we've been talking about prayer. First night was kind of in general last night, the power of prayer. And tonight we're going to be talking about fasting and prayer. And I got to think, you know, there's kind of like three taboos in the church that nobody wants you to talk about. Sex is number one. Money's number two. And the food is number three. Don't tell me I can't eat. You know, don't mess with my table. You know, I want that food. Don't mess with that. But we're going to talk about that tonight. But the problem is a lot of times when we go into fasting, we don't really realize why we're fasting. We just, you know, when the church is called a fast, so I'll go without eating, you know, one meal, two meal, two, three days, whatever you, you do. And we don't really realize what we're fasting for. And you know, I believe if God wants us to fast, He would tell us why. And He does. He does tell us why. If you have your Bibles with you, and I hope you do, turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. And even if you turn to some other chapters, you might want to hold your finger there. I'll be referring back to it throughout this evening. Isaiah 58, and I'm going to begin in verse 6. He says, Is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, and to break every yoke. Is it not to share the food with the hungry and to provide poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, a spring whose waters never fail. Now, in order to go on a fast, a fast simply, simply means to obtain, abstain from food. No food. A fast. Now, I know there's a lot of times there's people, you know, you medical reasons or whatever. There are other things that, that is acceptable to fast. You know, maybe some of us need to fast that thing on the wall. It's called television. You know, I've said before, I've told people, say, well, we say, well, we're Christians. We don't have an idol in our house. I say, well, if you don't, walk into your living room and tell me which way all the chairs and the couches are pointed. Towards your television, aren't they? Don't tell me you don't have an idol. 
that thing can become an idol to us. We've got to be very careful. That's a different sermon. I'll get to that later. <laughs> but we need to abstain from food or abstain from something. And then also prayer is prayer is not just what Mike just did for me. Although that's prayer. I'm not putting that down. Prayer is not the thing that we do over our tithes and our offerings. You know, prayer is not, you know, it's, it's not the thing that we do at the beginning, at the end of a sermon. But this says prayer is a time of seeking God. Seeking. You have to put something into it. It takes time to seek God. And we don't spend enough time seeking God. What we do spend time usually is seeking God to get what we want. But we don't seek, spend time seeking God. We want what He will give us. We want the provisions, but we don't seek the provider. We just ask for it. But it's a time of seeking. I'm going to give you a few other scriptures here uh, talking about uh, fasting and praying together here. Uh, when you pray, Matthew 6, 5, and 6. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they've received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room. You probably heard something about that this week, haven't you? Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. Okay, Matthew 6.16. It says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Now, you see, we've got these two, prayer and fasting, and in both of them, God says, this is something you need to be doing secretly, by yourself. Get off to yourself. Get into a room. And he also said, you know, the hypocrites here, the, the Pharisees back there, they wanted people to say, you know, they had the sackcloth and the ashes, and oh, woe is me, you know, I've been fasting for three days, and want everybody to know what they were doing. Well, we don't want to be like that. It's not something to go out and to, you know, boast about what I'm doing. You know, and, and sometimes I, I, I see people and I hear them and, 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 and they get into these real long, beautiful, fragrant prayers that just sound so elegant. And they go on and on and on because they want to be seen. They just go, oh, what a wonderful prayer. You know, and, and sometimes I, I hear prayers and it's almost like, who are you praying to? Are you praying to be heard by the people here? Or do you want God to hear your prayers? Who are you praying to? He says, you know, these are things that we need to be doing privately. You know, and probably most of these people that do stuff like that, the reason they do it so long in the public is because they don't do it at all in private. Right. They don't do it at all in private. They're doing it so they can be seen. And, and, and Jesus said, they've already received their reward. They get a pat on the back. Oh, that was just a beautiful prayer. They just got their reward. That's all they're going to get. So they better hang on to it. And it's not going to work for them in eternity, is it? Jesus ain't going to pat them on the back and say, oh, you was just the most wonderful prayer in that church. Won't happen. Won't happen. Matthew 6, 25 says, therefore, again, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes and oftentimes our bellies are our gods our bellies are our gods we don't want to go without eating we don't want to abstain from that food and I tell you sometimes in life there's things that we need to really get down and start praying about we need to go on a fast as well. And it's really not that hard. A lot of people don't like it. And I don't know that prayer and fasting is taught a whole lot in churches anymore. I really don't know uh, when the last time I personally heard a prayer about prayer and fasting. I, other than the one that I preached at my church about a year ago, I preached on prayer and fasting. And not only do I preach it, and I'm not saying this to lift myself up, but I spent three days praying and fasting for this service this week. 
because it was important to me. It was important to me. I wanted to hear from God, and I wanted to give God the message that He wanted you to have here at this church. I didn't want you to have, like I said, a lot of times I'll go and, and I'll go back to some of my old notes and stuff, and I'll pull things out, and, and I, I didn't do that for this service. I didn't do that. And I felt God had something special for the people here in this church, the people in this community, that you gotta, you got to get ready for it. That's the thing. we got to get ready for it. And that's why I'm really encouraging the prayer this week. And I'm encouraging the fasting that, that we get into because God's going to do great things. And you may see things and, and people may walk through that door that when they walk through you think, my gosh, I wish I'd been praying and fasting before I met him. You know, you don't know what you're going to come in, in, in contact with. We've, we've gotten, we've taken things lightly. Like my brother said about, you know, Christian, the word Christian is used uh, so lightly anymore. I, I did a message on that not too long ago and said, you know, instead of calling ourselves Christians, maybe we start calling ourselves disciples. Because you know what? Jesus never called them Christians. And when they were first called Christians, it was a derogatory term. It's a term that we've made up, that we use for people who go to church. Everybody that followed him, they were called disciples. Think about that, disciples. There are times in our life that we need prayers and fastings. That just uh, one of these cute little prayers isn't going to work. God, you know my problems. Take care of it. Thank you. Amen. And then go on. And a lot of times that's what it is. That's what it is. I see it in churches. I see people raising their hands for prayer requests, and they give a request for somebody, but they're not praying for them. Because you want me to know who you know who everybody expects to pray for them? Preacher. The pastor or the preacher. That's who they expect to pray. And I'm going to tell you, it is not his responsibility. He has a responsibility to God to be praying for you, but you have one to be praying for him and everybody else. It is not, he's just the leader. If we really got back to the scripture, a lot of pastors would be relieved of a whole lot of duties that they do. Because the church thinks it's up to the pastor to do everything. He's supposed to visit the sick. He's supposed to go to the homes. He's supposed to make phone calls. He's supposed to go here. He's supposed to go there. That's what a pastor, no, that's what you're supposed to do. The way I read my Bible. You're supposed to be doing this thing so that he can give himself to the word of God and to the study of the word to raise you up. Amen? That's what it says. Fivefold, part of the fivefold ministry. Some of this takes, that, that was a freebie, by the way. You don't have to pay me for that one. Uh, <laughs> like I said, a lot of times we need more than just this, this cute little prayer. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter, or Mark, chapter 9. And this was after a. The disciples had had a young boy brought to him by his father, and they couldn't cast a demon out of him. And then afterwards, in, in verse nine or chapter nine, beginning in verse twenty-eight, it says, "After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out?" Then he replied, "This kind can come only by prayer and fasting." So that tells me that there's going to be things in our life where we're going to have to spend time praying and fasting together you've got to put because if you fast without praying the only thing you're going to do is get hungry you're going to lose weight maybe if you need to do that but you're just going to get hungry if you pray without fasting or pray fast without praying so we need to be doing both and there's there's no hardened role on how long it might be a meal might be two meals, whatever you decide. But if you decide it's going to be a meal, you don't go watch TV, you don't go read a book, you don't do, you know, go out to your garden, you don't mow the lawn, unless when you're pushing your mower, you're going to be praying. Because I do that a lot too. I <laughs> think, oh please, don't let this hard be done. You know, either that or rain so I can stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but we have to be praying while we're giving up that meal or whatever. Take that time. Even if you're at work, and you get, if you get a half hour for lunch or whatever, you say, well, I'm going to fast. Get it and get away from everybody. Get away from everybody. Go off and start praying during that time. Take your Bible. Read, pray the Word. 
Find scriptures that you need. You know somebody needs a healing. Find all the healing scriptures and pray it out. God, this is your word. He loves it when you read his word back to him. Amen. We need to do that. And you start getting in there and, and praying. And by using Isaiah right here, there's a number of reasons that we pray and that we fast. Number one, we can be free from addictions. You might know somebody that has an addiction in their life. Maybe you have an addiction in your life of some kind. You know, there, there are all kinds of addictions. We all, when we say addictions, most of us think either alcohol or, or, or tobacco or, you know, smoking, uh, drinking. You know, we think those kind of addictions. But, you know, some people are addicted to other things. Some ladies, I know, I think they're addicted to shopping. They're addicted to buying shoes or buying purses. It's, it's true. It really is. Some people's addicted to chocolate. Some people's addicted to working out, going to the gym all the time. There's lots of things that you get addicted to. And what an addiction really does is take you away from the Word of God. Because you want to do that instead of reading and praying and fasting or whatever, be a part of God. So that will break you. it can break addictions in your life. It says, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of the injustice? to untie the cords of the yoke and to set the oppressed and break every yoke. He says, is this not the kind of fast that I've chosen? That we can do these things. We can be broke free of addictions. Again, tomorrow night, if you know somebody that has an addiction in their life, you can invite them to come to church or when we have a time of prayer, you can come and stand in the gap that was mentioned last night. Stand in the gap for them and be anointed that that addiction be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We need to break these yokes that are in people's lives because the enemy has got so many people bound up by everything else except the Word of God. I've never heard somebody say, I'm addicted to reading the Bible. Never heard it. Never heard it. But that's what we need to be addicted to. Amen. We need to be addicted to that. Then, the second thing also there in verse 6, it will help us to solve problems. The heavy burdens. It will break the yoke. Anybody have any problems in your life? You have things that are laying on your heart? Things that you can't get rid of? Problems in your life that you're dealing with? You know, a lot of times it can be work, it can be things at home, things that just seems like it's just bearing down on you and you just you don't know if you can take any more. That's what the prayer and the fasting is for, that we break those things. We get in there and we say, I'm going to fight until it's over. I'm going to see this thing through. I'm not going to stop till I get my answer. And that's what we got to do, not just a little sweet prayer and say, God, take this away from me. Still, there in verse 6, it says, let the oppressed go three, free. We need to be praying for revival and for soul winning. Are Amen. we really praying for revival in our churches? Are we really praying for revival in our churches? Do we really want that? Do we really want to see people saved? We say, yes, we do. But if you say, yes, we do, what are you doing about it? Amen. When was you down on your knees praying for your neighbor if they're unsaved? When was you sharing Jesus with them? When was the last time that you prayed that this church be full on Sunday morning? I told you, I've been praying that each week, and praise God, I look around tonight and my prayers are being answered, people. My prayers are being answered. There's more here tonight than there has been so far, and I'm looking for even more tomorrow night. I'm praying for a revival in this church. I'm praying for one in my church, too. But remember, last night, it's got to be intense. It's got to be intimate. You got to be ready. You want to pray for revival. Pray. I'm telling you, pray for the teenagers to come into this church. Tell them you just God. We need to get young people in here. We need to get them in here that's in love with the Lord, that's on fire for the Lord. And if they're not in love with God and they're not on fire for the Lord, they will be when they leave. Amen. Amen. They will be when they leave because we're going to preach the word of God to them and we're going to get them saved. They're going to see what Jesus can do. We're going, to, we're going to fill them with life. Because sometimes we need the young people to put life in our church. Amen? Amen? We need the young people to put life in our churches. Praise God. We need to be praying for revival and for soul winning. It says, let the oppressed go free. And I'm telling you, those that are out there that aren't saved, their soul is oppressed. It's being oppressed by the devil. Amen? He's our enemy. But I'm going to tell you what greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. With men, this is impossible. With God, 
all things are Amen. possible. Let the oppressed go free. And pray this. Pray this. The fourth thing, you can conquer mental and emotional problems. Verse 6, it says, break every yoke. Break every yoke. Mental and emotional problems you may have in your life. Are you stressed out? God don't want you to be stressed out. Go into fasting and prayer and say, I'm breaking this yoke in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm coming out of this. I'm tired of letting the devil defeat me. And I am victorious. Amen? I am victorious. It will break those things, but you've got to get in. You've got to be intense. You have to want it. Get in there and stay until you get your answer. And don't give up at the 11th hour. Don't give up at the 11th hour. Verse 7. Is, is, is it not to share your food with the hungry? It will meet physical needs of other people. Here's a banner idea. I'm going to fast lunch today. But I know a family down the road that could use some food. So I'm going to take the money that I would spend on lunch, and I'm going to buy food and take it to my neighbor. How about that? Boy, isn't that an idea? I'm going to feed somebody else, but that's what it says. That's why we pray and we fast. It's we're giving up something, but we're meeting the needs of somebody else. And that's why we got saved, amen? We got saved to help other people, to reach out to others, to touch other people. And if we're giving up food, let's take that food and go give it to somebody else that needs it. Just go give it to somebody else. We need to meet, and not only that, but it's to meet the needs of other people. You know, we probably all know somebody that has some kind of a need in their life. Just go meet it. Pray. You say, God, I, you know, maybe right now I don't have the means, but Lord, I know they need it. I'm going to pray that you bless me with this means that I can go bless them. Because we are blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. Verse 8. So that we'll have clear insight in decision making. It says, then your light. Then your light will break forth. Wow, you know what I can do? Maybe you'll start coming together as a church and have ideas to, to reach out to your community. Do things that will bring people in that normally don't come in. You just open your doors. You have, I tell you, you have a meal for your community. I promise you they'll come. Everybody comes for free food, right? right. You know, we do it at our church twice a year. We do an ice cream social. And we pack our church with people. We probably have over 200 people in a very period of two hours come in and out of our church because we have an ice cream social. Food will bring them in. Have a, have a community picnic. Do something out somewhere outside and invite the community to come. And, and they will come. And then they can be exposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. To people who call themselves Christians. And you can mingle with them and you can invite them to your church and let them know what's going on. <clears throat> Clear insight in decision making. What is it we can do for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wow, idea one, idea two. It go on and keep going from there. Then it says, here's a good one. We all need this one. Health and healing. <clears throat> Your healing will appear quickly. Quickly. Too many times we put up with ailments that we really don't need to. We accept it. And I know sometimes this is, like I said, I'm not a faith healer, but I know who is. And I believe he's in the healing business today. The only trouble is, most of us really, we know he can, but we don't really believe he will. Because a lot of times what it is, we come and get prayed for, and, and I'm as guilty as this as, as anyone else, okay? I've, I've done this very same thing. We'll come and get prayed for, and we'll walk away instead of saying, by the stripes of Jesus I have been healed. We'll walk back and say, well, you know, I really don't feel any different. There's, a, there's some people in my church, I don't dare ask them how they feel. Because they're going to tell me, and I really don't want to hear it. Because it is woe is me every time. And I just quit asking them. They usually get it in anyway, but I don't ask for it. Because I don't care how many times you've prayed for them, they're still sick. They're still sick. They're still sick. I believe there's people... I don't know if I should say this or not, but I believe it's true. I believe that there's people who are getting benefits 
for being disabled that don't want to be healed because if they do, they'll lose their benefit and have to start working again. You said, hmm? I said, you can delete that out. No. <laughs> I'm serious. I do. I believe that. I believe there's people stealing money from the government because they're lazy. They don't want to be healed. They want to be right where they're at. And those people won't get healed either. I don't know about you, but I like being healed. Amen. I don't like it when this body hurts. Does it hurt once in a while? Yes, it does hurt once in a while. But I tell you what, I have been blessed by God with health. I do not get sick. I might get a sniffle here and there and you know, maybe have a bad day, but that's it for this kid. I don't want to be sick. I don't, you know, everybody, what's, you hear that, we're getting around that time of year, what's everybody starting to say? Oh, I hope I don't get the flu this year. <laughs> and you think Jesus wants to heal you and you're saying you hope you don't get the flu. Which way is it? Do you really want to be healed or not? But we get in there and we start fasting and praying. Pray for a healthy life. Pray that God will take care of you and keep you healed and keep you healthy. That's what it's for. Verse 8, for a more righteous life, it says your righteous will go before you. This is an influential testimony, people. If your righteousness goes before you and people see it, they understand that you're different than everybody else. You know, when you're standing in line at the store, I would say dollar store up here. You know, if you're standing in line and everybody else is complaining and you're standing there and you're just happy as can be. And, you know, people are going to say, well, you know, why aren't you upset like everybody? Ah, you know, it's okay. You know, God's going to take care of me. You know? I was telling Mike this afternoon at dinner, he graciously took me out for dinner and, and uh, didn't make me pay. But uh, no, he did. He, he, he did. Uh, and, and, I, and I was sitting there and I said, there's one time I used to work uh, with a catering business on Potomac Eagle over in Romney, West Virginia. It's a scenic railroad. And I worked in the first class car. I said, one thing, one thing I will never forget about working on that train. I worked as a waiter in one of the first class cars. And about halfway through the trip, there was one certain group that was in there. And about halfway through, they called me back to where they were sitting. And they said, we got a question for you. I said, yeah. He said, well, it wasn't really a question. He said, we got something to ask you. He said, you're a Christian, aren't you? To me, that was a testimony. Because I didn't go, I didn't stand, you know, I wasn't preaching the gospel to them while I was feeding the food. I was just giving them food and taking care of them. And, but the way I was going about it, I was enjoying myself. You know, I mean, sometimes you get 30 people on one of those cars, they would irritate you really, really good. You know, it was almost you had to have a fake smile, but you had to do it good. And But they said, we know you were a Christian just by the way you were acting. To me, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. I just, and I'll never forget it. So it says, your righteousness will go before you. It'll go before you. We read in the scripture where it says, when Paul walked past Peter, or Peter walked past people, when his shadow fell on him. They were healed. His righteousness proceeded. Then in verse 9, or verse 8, for the glory of the Lord to protect you. He will be our rear guard. Basically that means God's got your back. Amen. God's got your back. When you read about the full armor of God, not one piece of that is for the back of your body. You know why? Because God is our rear guard. Rear guard. He's got your back. And when you spend time praying and fasting, God's going to be there for you all the time. He will not disappoint you. He will not let you down. But He's there for you every moment when you're following Him and you're walking after Him. Now I want us to go back to Isaiah again. And I want to read this again. I'm going to start in verse 9. When we get in there... And we're serious about praying and about fasting. We want our light to shine. Our health is just, just overflowing. Our testimony is going before us. People know that there's something different about us. We're meeting the needs of other people. <clears throat> then you will call and the Lord will answer you. You will cry for help and He will say, Here am I. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, we just talked about getting that out of our life, with the pointing finger, 
the malicious talk. Stop fighting and fussing over things that don't matter. If you spend yourself in behalf of the hungry and you satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. That sounds like a place I want to be walking in my life. I want to be walking where I know God is there with me at all times. The Word says, I shall never leave you and I shall never forsake you. But He means that. But we have things that we have to do in our life as well. Amen. It's time to start adding a little bit of fasting into our life. And again, I want to encourage you. Tomorrow night, if you know someone that has an addiction, bring them or come and pray for them. Make a, make a list if you have to of people tomorrow night, but bring it. We're going to pray tomorrow night. We're going to pray for one another tomorrow night. We're going to lay hands on the sick. We're going to pray for those children that are here tomorrow night, for the teenagers that come. We're going to pray for you tomorrow night. We're going to pray for moms and dads to bring their children up in the way that they should go so that when they're older, they'll not be Amen. We're going to pray for those things tomorrow night because it's important. And if the Lord would lay it on your heart, if the Lord would lay it on your heart, I'm going to ask you to do a fast of some kind tomorrow. It doesn't have to be all day. It can be a meal. It can be television. It can be something that you usually do. It's don't let it be work now. You need to work. That's what I say. I'm going to fast a day at work. How about that? No. Fast something maybe that you do on a regular basis. Give it up for the day. Maybe it's soda. A lot of people, you know, they drink, well, they don't have a soda all day long in their hand. They'll drink soda. Or if you're Uncle Si, he drinks tea all day long. You know, fast something that's important to you. Give it up for one day. And pray for tomorrow night. Pray for people to come. Pray for souls to be saved. Pray for the oppressed to go free. Pray for those who are hurting and, and, and has problems with their body, with their, you know, they're sick. Pray for those people. Get them here tomorrow night. And when we come together and we pray in one accord, we have our minds set on what we're going to do. And I'm letting you know in advance what we're going to do tomorrow night. If you want to be a part of that, come out. Be here. Be expecting for God to do something that maybe you've never seen Him do before. Like I said last night, we need a modern day move of God in our churches. We need it. And you need to say that, ask this question, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? Let it start here at Asher Clay because God loves you and He wants to do something in the midst of you. But you have to want it as well. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So as we close tonight with a, a song or whatever we're going to do, I'm going to be up here just like I was last night. I'm going to just stand down front here with Mike. I've got the oil. If you want anointed, you come up and you tell me what you want anointed for. I'll pray for you. Or if you just want to come up and to the altar. And, and you, know, you don't feel you have to come up and kneel. Where there's pews here. We can sit you on the front pier if you want to come up and sit down. Just come up and sit down. That'll be fine too. Right, Mike? Amen. As a Buddy comes forward to lead us in the closing number, I was thinking when Randy was speaking, Joel uh, chapter 2 came to mind, uh, verses 12 to 14. And this is what's written. It says, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. You know, God knows that when we're weeping and when we're mourning, that's a prayer. Mm -hmm. That's a prayer because God knows our hearts and we are weeping and mourning and we're praying and we're fasting. And he says, uh, rend your heart and not your garments. Mm -hmm. Return to the Lord your God for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? 
you may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing. Grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. He's going to bless you. Amen. He's going to bless you. Then, you know, we just look over really quickly. We know the Beatitudes, don't we? Mm -hmm. We know that four, uh, chapter mm -hmm. 5, verse 4 says, Blessed are those who mourn, so be comforted. Then we skip down to verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, not after food, after righteousness. After righteousness. They will Amen. Amen. So come on down, please, for an anointing, for prayer. Just to, just to pray. Okay, Randy and I'll be here. Buddy. Amen. You know, Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I hope you've been moved by God to move tonight. I want to tell you right now, you may make a decision that tomorrow, you may decide to make the decision to fast for the day, or for a meal, or for an activity, but to spend that time in fasting and in prayer. But, you know, if you do that, there's no guarantee that you're going to get what you want. That's right. It may not be what you want. The answer may not be, but you'll get an answer. That's right. That's right. That's right. I remember 10 months ago, I spent time in fasting and prayer for something Mike wanted. <laughs> God had other plans. <laughs> And God had other plans. And praise God, he had other plans. And uh, my stubbornness, you know, I could have went away from God's plans. It's like so many of us do. Amen. You know, do. But we have to listen to God when we go into fasting and prayer. <coughs> and, you know, I'm not an English person, all right? I, I, I butcher <laughs> the English language, not knowing a noun from an adjective to a pronoun to a, whatever those things are, other things are called. But I know enough that a verb means action, and prayer is a verb, and fasting is a verb, something you do, we must do. But God will move if you fast and pray. Yes, he will. He will answer. Again, it may not be your answer. God always gives an answer that's perfect. Mm -hmm. It'll be perfect for you. Mm -hmm. It'll be perfect for the person maybe you're Standing in the gap for and interceding for. It will be a perfect answer. Let it be. Amen. Lord God, we thank, thank you, you for the night. We thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord God, for sending Randy to us. For just the right time, just the right season for Asher Glade. Praise you, Lord God, for that. We praise you. And as we leave here tonight, Lord God, we pray and ask that you go before us. Be with us. Lord, don't let the message stop in our hearts when we get out that door. Amen. That's right. Have that message burn within us, Lord God. As, as it says in the scriptures, did our not, hearts not burn when the men were walking on the road to Emmaus? And Jesus was talking to them. Mm -hmm. Our hearts were burning. They burn. knew. Lord God, may our hearts continue to burn as we go into the nights and we go into tomorrow. <coughs> so when we rise in the morning, Fresh. Jesus. We'll be ready to serve you. We'll be ready to listen to your word. We pray and ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God.